Hi everyone, welcome to week four. I am here to give you an introduction to visual hierarchy and your assignment. Your visual hierarchy assignment this week has a lot of moving parts, so I want to make sure that everybody has clarity about what it is that you're going to be handing in and creating, and um, I want everybody to really, um, you know, follow the directions and do really well on the assignment. Okay, so visual hierarchy is where you, um, as the designer, um, you how and uh, why you emphasize certain information to stand out in a design. Okay, so um, here, this obviously is the thing that your eye goes to first. In Western culture, we usually read top down, left right. That's really standard. Visual hierarchy completely upends that and says, no, you're going to look where you where there is the most visual interest. Okay, so here, this isn't directly at the top. It's kind of like a like a quarter of the way down. Here you see this is like kind of a joke one. The title. Um, is at the bottom right there so that really stands out over here your eye does not go here first it goes right into the middle right so through the text size and the color and this is typographic furniture because it's in a shape we our eye is drawn there first now over here we see this first and this is actually from Drexel University so it's mad dragon student we see the mad dragon first the next thing that we don't really kind of see is 2008 and then free admission. So whenever there's like free admission or free food or any kind of discount that really, I would even mean that a little bit bigger. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, as long as it stands out and, and that this is so different in shape that it really does draw the eye. It doesn't have to be huge. It's just, it's so different from all of the other shapes that are on the page. It does pop out at you. So this is, these are all techniques a visual hierarchy, and these are all techniques that you are going to employ um, this week in your first project. I will be back with part two. Okay, moving right along, we are now on Blackboard, and here is the assignment. Now again, it's on the discussion board. You don't have to reply to anybody, um, but you do have to post three versions, and you have to answer the questions that I'm asking for each of the versions and using your sources. Okay, so the project that we're working on for visual hierarchy this week is we are doing a play um, or a flyer. It can be either, um, doesn't really matter. It's kind of six of one and half dozen of the other when we're, because um, we're not printing it out, but if you did want to print it out, obviously a flyer would be a heck of a lot easier to do. Anyway, so the, um, the project is a, um, a Shakespeare play, and we're doing a poster for that or the flyer for that, and we're advertising it to college students. So we want college students to be interested. We want to catch their attention, and we want to um, make them interested in going. Okay. So Shakespeare, this is a um, one of Shakespeare's plays that's really kind of more lighthearted. Um, you might kind of consider it a romantic comedy. Um, so it is kind of lighthearted. It's kind of fun. We have a quote about the modern production um, and how much fun it is. Uh, so we really want to emphasize that this is very modern. It's not going to be like some kind of, you know, um, old fashioned red, big red velvet curtain Shakespeare production. So the way that you need to design this is very modern. So modern, the, t um, the name of the play must stand out. That must be the most visually interesting item, I'm sorry, element on the whole um, layout. And then you also need by William Shakespeare that can go underneath that can be a lot smaller. So um, you really want to make that title catch the eye, make it big, make it bold, make it really interesting visually and make it modern looking. So I would really stay away or be careful with using like the calligraphy, calligraphy um, you know, types here. Like you, you want to be careful that it doesn't look like it's super old fashioned and something that your grandma would enjoy going to. No offense, grandma. Um, so we are advertising this play to college students and they get a big discount. It's only $15 ticket for, that would normally be 35. So it's a good price. So that is the second piece of information that you need to highlight, $15 student ticket with ID. Okay. Um, you can also break proximity. 
you don't have to have the regular ticket price with the, the discount ticket price. You can. However, what is emphasized is the student price that is discounted. So it's $15. After that, the third most important piece of information is the, um, the quote, because a testimonial um, by a third party takes reduces risk, kind of maybe makes it more likely that you might want to go. So that has to stand out. After that, the date, the time, very that's very important. The least important information um, would be the actors because and the director, unless it, they're famous, you know what I mean? We're not really gonna know, we're not really gonna care. So you don't have to emphasize them. You do have to mention them, but you don't have to emphasize it. The very, very, very least um, important information is where the theater is. The theater address, the website, and the phone number. That can really go, I'm just going to tell you, can really just go on the bottom. Um, usually the best way to handle it is you could center it on the bottom. Now you can't center the whole layout, but you can certainly put it on the bottom in the center or you can run it across the bottom. You can try playing with it otherwise, but I'm telling you, do not put it at the top. That's really just not going to work, okay? It's just not that important. It needs to be legible. We need to be able to get the address. Um, you might want to highlight it's the Wilma Theater. I don't know how well known that is generally. I mean, it's a very well known theater in Philadelphia. Again, I don't really think it matters. I think it's fine to put that Wilma Theater and the address at the bottom. Okay, so do your best on that. And then here, let me come back and just show you. So in the first version, you are just working with just text, just type, no images. You cannot center a line. Okay, you could try um, experiment with the Z pattern layout. You'll read about that and you'll you'll see that in the video. Very, very effective compositional um, approach to a project like this. Um, you can then um, answer this question. You must use at least two sources. And again, it's really important that you have version one, but, um, answer the question underneath. Now version two, we go from just text and type, and uh, you add furniture, typographic furniture. You can add shapes. You can um, do lines. And again, no pictures, no clip art, no color. Okay, and then just discuss the impact of typographic furniture, shapes, and lines to your design and hierarchy. And again, you should be mentioning at least a source when you are addressing that. And then third is you can um, use color. And you can do splash, you can do a lot of color, you can use more than one color, whatever it is that you want to do, you can certainly do. And, but you want to use color really strategically and you want to use it as a tool, a visual hierarchy, and also just to create a really nice, you know, look. And then you answer these two questions. You don't necessarily have to use any sources for these two. It's just um, really your opinion. So three versions. Text and type, no images, no color, no center alignment. Version two, um, typographic furniture or shapes and lines. Version three, um, typographic furniture, shapes, lines, and color. Okay, so and then you have um, one, two, three, four questions to answer. All right, so I hope that this helps you. I want everybody to do, you'll be surprised at how good you are going to make this look without images. You're going to really make it visually appealing and exciting. Okay, so have fun with it and reach out if you have any questions.